sharing my screen now, so you should be able to see the screen. Let me go to the um, class site. You that one. Some people have emailed me. I haven't checked my email today yet. So uh, when you come to the Canvas website, which I'm sure you've been here because um, you're in the class, there's actually an easy way to uh, get into the class, and that is click on the Zoom or Zoom meetings, it might be. I'm not sure what it looks like in a student view. Let me take a look what it's called. Zoom meetings, same. And then you can click on that and uh, click on the, the Zoom class. Let me get that there. And that always pops in the way. And then just start the class there. Another way of getting the class, like if you're uh, not able to log into Clark College, is you can just go to www dot zoom dot com and you need to put in the meeting id and the password which i think the password is micro but it might be clark let me look that up <laughs> um, i sent that in the email passcode is micro Uh, this would be a very useful site. This is the main page for the Canvas microbiology class. And I've got a bunch of things for you to read here. There's the syllabus, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, if you're needing help, either technical help because you're having trouble you know, accessing an exam or, or accessing the class site, uh, this this link gives you uh, some help on what to do. The main thing is uh, don't really ask me for help because I won't be able to get you technical help. I can help you with the class, but uh, uh, contact the clark.edu ITS. This is the um, IT department, which I call, call the computer help desk, and they will be able to help you. Uh, you can modify your class site to make sure you get messages. And when I grade an assignment, uh, I've got a link here to my YouTube website. If you're ever not able to watch the Zoom meeting directly, I'm going to hopefully record it and then post it on my YouTube website. And so this link takes you there. Um, a little bit of notes about Zoom, how it works. And then there's the Zoom meeting invite, which I emailed you. Some YouTube videos that are in the uh, class. It, it, it's probably better to uh, uh, re review the lesson and directly click on the link in the lesson. But we have a number of them linked on the YouTube site. Uh, some of the lecture animations only view the favorites link. Uh, biosafety information for students and physicians. This won't really be too important for you guys because the lab is going to be online. So you're not ever going to be exposed to microorganisms we have in the lab. But this is for the students who uh, come into the actual lab and then they're exposed to microorganisms. Uh, for taking all of the exams, the quizzes, and the final, you'll have to use the lockdown browser. This is uh, something made by Respondus, and you have to use it for the quizzes and the final. It's a program. You download it, and then it will uh, lock you into their browser. It's the Respondus lockdown browser. And you need to take that for taking the quiz. I suggest, I strongly suggest, you take the extra credit quizzes so that you can make sure that the lockdown browser is working. Last term, 
I had a student who kept trying to get it to work right before the quizzes and never got it to work. So she missed all of the quizzes and she would ask the IT department. Of course, they won't get back to her, didn't get back to her immediately. And so generally, uh, when they tried to give her help, it was already past the time to take the quiz. So try and get the lockdown browser working on your system before uh, you take the quiz. And if you take the extra credit quiz, that'll make sure the lockdown browser is working. Now, generally speaking, almost all students have no trouble once they download the lockdown browser. But one or two students every other term, meaning I don't get it every term, but every other term, students have trouble with the lockdown browser. And they generally just have to change a setting on their computer, and then the lockdown browser will work. Will work. I'm not ever confident that the lady who was getting help last time ever followed up and actually did the help that the, the computer IT department gave her. So I don't know. She was the only person who never got the lockdown browser to ever work, but I'm not certain she ever did what she was told. Uh, she tended to, and some students do this, it doesn't work, so they delete it and then they download it again. Well, that doesn't work because, like I said, usually if it's not working, you got to change a setting on your computer to get the lockdown browser to work. And the IT department is really good at getting the lockdown browser to work. I've never had any problems except for the that one student who was last term. And I just didn't have much confidence in that student's following the directions. She did eventually take all the quizzes by coming in and taking the final under what do you call it supervision uh maybe at the library i'm not sure where she went and uh, she was able to take all the quizzes because i allowed her to do it and um, um and then the final which she actually took when she was supposed to hopefully you won't have trouble with the lockdown browser but if you do take a look at this link here student technical help link. You should let me know you're having trouble, but I won't be able to help you. I'll just know you're having trouble and then can uh, maybe uh, delay the uh, taking of the quiz by a few days. If you delay taking a quiz by more than two days, I will not allow you to take it because the answers will be showing, I think two or three days after the quiz is due. We'll talk a little bit about when the quizzes are due in just a minute when I'm talking about the syllabus. Uh, if you don't have the textbook, and maybe the bookstore is out of textbooks, I haven't heard that that information yet, but, but if the bookstore is out of textbooks, I have the first three chapters of the textbook online, and then all the chapter summaries, but not the rest of the chapters. So this link will help you until you get a textbook. And then there's the link to the plagiarism tutorial and then the plagiarism quiz. The plagiarism quiz is worth 20 points. You must score 100% on the plagiarism quiz. If you do not, then you will be missing 100 points on your um, infectious disease project. So you need to get 100% on the plagiarism quiz or else you're going to be down 100 and whatever points you're down on the plagiarism quiz. And this is a guide in APA citation style, which will help you with the plagiarism tutorial. The plagiarism tutorial will tell you about the, uh, I think they do the APA citation style, but it might be the MLA citation style. So you need to do this by April 8th. This quiz, you do not need the lockdown browser. The plagiarism tutorial and the quiz have been designed by Clark College Library. Any questions about anything so far? All right, if you scroll down further, 
you'll see week, week one lecture. This is a link to the overview and the objectives to chapter one, as well as chapter 10. I have a little bit of chapter 10 in there. Um, and then the study guide to chapter one and chapter 10. So let's look at the overview. Can we get the soft copy of the textbook? I'm sorry? Can we get the soft copy of the textbook? Uh, yes, if you can. How do we you, how do we get it? Uh, I don't think the uh, bookstore has a soft copy, but I'm not sure. Some maybe another student can answer that because I haven't been into the bookstore. Can anyone okay. answer her question? I this is um, I'm doing this class for a second time now, but when I got it, it was uh, last fall and they had soft copies then. I'm just not sure about now. 100%. I believe that the uh, the textbook, which we'll talk in and when we're talking about the uh, the syllabus, I'll, I'll go into that. But the the. Uh, the edition that they make for Clark College, I believe, has a soft cover. It's not a hard cover. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean to say that e vision, e vision online. Yeah, you can buy the e vision if you wish. I didn't see that option when I went to bookstore and trying to buy this text. I didn't see that option. Um, can you ask that question when I talk about that? And I'll sure. tell you what your options are for buying the textbook. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. So this is the uh, overview and objectives of chapter one. Some students printed out. All of your questions will come from the objectives. Now, obviously, the objectives are a little broad. Like you have to explain what is a microbe or a microorganism explain what's the term pathogenic, and then answer the question, are most microorganisms pathogenic? But all the quiz questions will come from the objectives. So these are the objectives for chapter one. If you scroll down, there are the objectives to class uh, chapter 10. We're going to cover chapter 10 with chapter one. Uh, chapter 10 is the classification of microorganisms. All right. Uh, sometimes I give you a link with the objectives and the overview. Let's back up. Actually, I can close that down. For chapter one, I've done that. Uh, eventually, I'm going to do that for all the chapters. But on many of the chapters, I have the study guide and the objectives and I guess the overview all together on one link, like um, chapter three. I just call it the study guide. But the start of the study guide will have the overview and the objectives. So the start, the overview, and then the objectives to chapter three. And then you come down, there's the class notes. Uh, the class notes will be over the same material I'm going to lecture, but the class notes will be in sentence or what do you call that, outline format in, instead of PowerPoint format. But it is the same material we're going to lecture over. Any questions about any of that? So some students print this out and then use this as their notes while I'm lecturing. Other students will write out the notes after I'm done with the lesson. And that won't be for two days now. Uh, meaning after maybe, actually probably, <laughs> probably won't finish lesson one and on uh, Thursday. But if we do, I will then make uh, uh, the... Uh, PowerPoint available to you. 
uh, when it's not available and we finish the lesson, you can email me and remind me to make that available to you. If you remind me beforehand, I'll just ignore your email. I'll make this available once we finish the lesson. And then you should look at the web page uh, because uh, it has some extra credit links. Like if you send me uh, an extra credit picture of your face, it tells you all the things you have to do to turn it in. I'll give you three points and it tells you where to submit it. Uh, the extra credit study sheet, and this is, both of these are due, well, excuse me, extra credit study sheet is due this Saturday. I think the extra credit picture is due next Saturday. The extra credit study sheet, you got to download this uh, spreadsheet. On the first spreadsheet, you have to tell me a little bit about your daily schedule. I need to check your daily schedule to make sure that your study schedule, which will be the next tab or the next couple of tabs, uh, actually fits into your daily schedule. If you don't want to tell me specifics, like, I don't know, at five o'clock, you always eat dinner. Actually, that obviously isn't true. So we'll say at uh, four o'clock, you always eat dinner and you get together with your family and eat dinner. You get together with your your uh, significant other and you eat dinner. Uh, and you don't want to say that specifically. Just say something like dinner time or personal time. OK, but I do need the first page to be filled out on your daily schedule. And that will be three points for the daily schedule. And then on the next web, uh, what do you call it, tab, give me your study schedule for microbiology. If you have the same study schedule for every week, what you're planning, just always study at the same time, then you only need one tab. However, we have different tabs in case your study schedule for week one will differ for week two and will differ for week three. So I think there it's given three uh, tabs. If you need more tabs, just add more tabs. Okay, so give me a study schedule for every week for your study. Any questions about that? You'll get three points for the daily schedule and three points for the um, study schedule. Generally speaking, the only thing I ever do is I'll uh, send in a comment and state that uh, um, you, you're not studying for enough for the average student in my class. And we'll talk about that when I'm talking about the syllabus, how long you, you, you probably will need to study for the average student. Okay. Uh, if you don't do this, like you don't attend, uh, put your daily schedule, you'll be missing those three points. These are extra credit points. And you'll get a minus one penalty if something is not clear. So stay, stay when you're studying, okay? Your daily schedule, just be general if you don't want to be specific. Like you don't have to tell me where you go to work, but you should tell me when you're working if you're working. If you're in other classes, you should put that in your daily schedule, the times you're in other classes. All right, any questions about any of that? So those are two extra credit products that you can do in week one and two. There are other extra credit projects and we'll mention that as the time comes. Please note the Plagy quiz is due this week and it's due on Saturday. Generally speaking, the lab worksheets and the lecture worksheets will be due at 11.59 p.m. this, or uh, the Saturday of the week you do them. Any question about that? Uh, there is an exception worksheet for lab 00. That would be the lab we're doing today is due I think it's due at 8 a.m. Friday morning. The reason is I'm going to take attendance on Worksheet Lab 00. If you do not submit 
Worksheet Lab 00 by Friday at 8 a.m., you will be dropped from the class. There are some students who are interested in adding the class. And so if you do not turn in the worksheet by 8 a.m. on Friday, you will be dropped and somebody else will be given your spot. Any questions about any of that? All right. And then at Friday at 5 p.m., I have to turn in who's uh, attending the lab and who I will be dropping. And that has to be done. So this is a, a, the only time I'm really going to take attendance. Any questions about that? All right. Is there a student here who wants to add the class? Please unpause and state. Yes. Want to me. Add the class. Okay. Let me write your name down. Actually, if I stop sharing the screen, I'll be able to see who is speaking. But uh, all right. Can that student say yes again? Um, it's Amanda Stutz. Okay. All right. Is there another student here who wanted to add the class? There were supposedly two who were going to try and add the class. All right, for the student, oh, it's Amanda. Um, uh, I don't use the chat because I cannot see the chat when uh, when I'm sharing my screen. And I uh, don't know how to end that. Uh, so uh, if you have a question, don't, uh, don't uh, put it in the chat because I won't see it. And uh, Generally, they state that if you uh, want to use the chat and the emoticons and whatever else they have in Zoom, you really need two instructors running the class, one to lecture, one to do the other things. And uh, you only have one, one instructor, so I simply do not use the chat. And since I'm not going to see it when I'm sharing the screen, it's uh, probably the best thing to do anyways. So you need to speak up or email me if you have a, a question. Let's shut that down. Move this forward. Come on. Ah, no, I can't get a hold of that. There it is. All right, let's talk a little bit about the syllabus. At the back of the syllabus, we have the lecture schedule and the schedule. Uh, somebody just added the class. If you're a student who wanted to uh, um, add the class, please let me know. No, it dropped me from the thing and then I re-added it. I don't know what okay. happened. <laughs> well, sorry. I'm sorry it dropped. That's probably oh. your internet connection. Um, <laughs> By the way, if I ever lose the internet connection, I will try to restart the class as soon as I can. So do stay on if I'm dropped. That doesn't usually happen. Uh, more often what happens is I have an unstable internet connection, in which case you'll not hear me for a few seconds. Just ask me to repeat if that happens. All right, so this is the lecture schedule. We're gonna be talking about uh, the syllabus, tips for success, uh, scientific vocabulary, and then we'll move on to chapter one. We will not probably cover chapter 10 today, but in chapter one, we will cover chapter 10. Only the parts about classification of microorganisms, which I believe are page 264 to 272 of the custom edition of the textbook made for Clark. Uh, we do have a lab today. Today we're going to be go doing lab 00 on lab safety training. And that will be at uh, the lab time, which I think is 630. 
Uh, and I've already mentioned the lab worksheet is due for 00 at 8 a.m. Friday morning. That's, uh, gosh, that isn't right. That's 1-6. Uh, that's not 1-6. I imagine that was supposed to be something like, it's not 4-6 either. Hmm, I'm going to have to take a look at my syllabus. I don't have... Uh, I don't have the dates right. Hmm. Let me see if I've... Uh... Online, it does say the correct date. It says uh, Friday 4-7 on the canvas. So... Yeah, and why the heck is this not the right one? Hmm. Let me... I'll have to look into that. Um, let's go to the online syllabus because uh, I'm not sure where my correct syllabus is. It should be there, and it's not. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> that means I've got another copy someplace on my computer and don't know where that is at the moment. Let's just download it. Close the first one down. Yeah, that's right. I thought I'd change those dates. All right. Um, and then you do need to take the online plagiarism quiz by uh, Saturday, 11.59. That'll be 4.8. There will be a lecture worksheet, which is due uh, Saturday, 4.8. And then lab 01. The worksheet will be due Saturday, 4-8. I don't have the lecture worksheet and the lab worksheet on the syllabus because down here I state most lecture and labs have a worksheet that's due on Saturday at 11.59 p.m. of the week of the lesson. All right, any question about any of that? Uh, where you can get those worksheets, let me go ahead and point that out is under the week one lecture, there's the worksheet. I have the uh, questions here, but if you want to download it, go ahead and download it. And then uh, you only need to answer one question in the worksheet, but you do need to answer it in the order of the questions in the worksheet, meaning I want the first person to answer question number one, and the second person to answer question number two, and the third person to answer question number three. Otherwise, it's just too difficult to figure out which questions have been answered and which have not. If you don't like the question that's available to you, all you need to do is wait and let another student answer it and then answer the next question, okay? If you do not do the questions in the order that they are in the worksheet, then it'll make a mess of the worksheet and I will probably give you a penalty. Right there it says, for full credit, please answer the questions in the order they are on the worksheet. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to tell which questions have been answered and, of course, which have not been answered. Uh, in case we have a worksheet where there's less questions than the number of students, what you should do is answer a question that you think was answered incorrectly. Try to answer an incorrectly answered question, if possible. Otherwise, just uh, if, if there's no incorrect answer, you can start all over at question number one and then answer in the order of the worksheet. But try and answer a question that's been answered incorrectly. All right, any questions about the worksheets? And this tells you when it's due uh, Saturday, uh, April 8th.
about that syllabus. All right, so uh, please, please be patient. If something's not quite correct, you can let me know and then I'll correct it. Uh, occasionally, students have had the wrong date or the wrong time for a quiz, and then they don't let me know until immediately, like the day of the quiz, and I need to know in advance to correct it. So uh, uh, hopefully everything's correct uh, this term, but uh, uh, let me know in advance if, if there's a problem and I'll correct it. Uh, the lecture will always be 5 to 6.20 or about that time. When it's about 6.15, let me know it's 6.15 if I'm not noticing that it's close to the end time, and, and uh, then I'll wrap it up. Uh, I do need a little bit of downtime before I start the lab. The lab will start at 6.30, and then we'll go to about 8 o'clock. We'll talk a little bit more about the lab when we get to the lab. Uh, this will be the online Zoom class. I will try to record the message. If ever you see that I'm not recording, that dot's the only thing I know that I am recording, that uh, uh, if you see that I'm not recording, let me know and I'll start recording because it's important for the students who are not actively on the Zoom uh, uh, session and they can look at it on the YouTube website. So if ever you miss the Zoom class, just Take a look at the class online. Uh, there's my clark.edu email. Don't email me here because I don't check this email more than twice a week. I do check the Canvas email uh, at least every other day. And oftentimes, especially Monday through Friday, I will check it every day, but at least every other day. This one, like I said, I don't check it that much because I get a lot of garbage at this uh, email. And uh, um, so don't email me there. Email me at the Canvas website. I do have a Canvas office. However, I'm not planning to be on campus this term. This class is all online. So if you want to meet with me in office hours, let's do it online. We can uh, set it up by email or we can do it after the lab. After the last student logs out, you'll have privacy and I will know if another student logs on so we can stop the conversation. But we can meet after the lab or uh, if you don't mind doing it publicly, meaning the questions, just a question about the class needs fine if other students hear it. We can actually do it after I've finished my lecture for the lab, meaning during the lab time. And there was a question about the textbook. Here are your, your options for the textbook. You can go to the uh, bookstore and buy the third custom edition. It only contains the chapters we covered. It's soft cover. It is the 12th edition of Totora, Funk and Case, Microbiology and Introduction. If you buy the textbook, the regular textbook online, you will note that Totora, Funk and Case have now got a 13th edition. You can buy the 12th edition, at least you could, uh, online as well. I only have the pages for the 12th edition shown. I don't have the, the 13th edition. Earlier editions are okay, but if you get an earlier edition, either the second edition custom edition or the first edition custom edition for Clark, or I don't know, the 11th or the 10th edition of the uh, Tutorial Funkin' Case, they're okay, but you have to figure out which page number to read. Now, most of the time I'm just assigning an entire chapter so it won't be difficult at all, like chapter two, chapter three. But for chapter 10, you only need to cover page 264 to 272. But I tell you what that covers, the classification of microorganisms. So if you have a different textbook, you can just look to see where the classification of microorganisms are, and then only read those pages. I think. Chapter 10 may be the only place where I give uh, page numbers. Yeah, that's the only place where I give page numbers.
All right, so those are two possibilities. Let's get up to the textbook. And then there down here, it says uh, you can buy the, you can buy the custom, well, actually the custom edition will be hard to buy online. You might be able to find it, uh, but just do a, a search and you can find the uh, 12th edition or the 13th edition or an earlier edition of the textbook online, you can get, I think you can get the 12th edition, the full copy in the bookstore. You can also supposedly, you're supposed to get the e-textbook um, in the bookstore and there's supposed to be instructions. You can either buy the e-book or rent the e-book. And there should be instructions in the bookstore. If there are not, you can go to the the uh, editor of the book, not the editor, the publisher of the book. And uh, I don't know who that is right off the top of my head, but I could do a search for this, and that will give me the twelfth edition of the publisher's book. It might also give you the uh, other places like Amazon you could buy it at. Um, from experience with eBooks, uh, Vital Source is a great place to go for inexpensive eBooks. Uh-huh, okay. All right, uh, where is that? So this is Amazon. Uh, this is actually the publisher, Pearson. You can buy it directly from the publisher or you can buy it from a bookstore. And there's many sites to get textbooks, especially for uh, the 13th edition and probably the 12th edition. You could buy it from somebody who is selling uh, used or older textbooks. There are sites like that online too. All right, any question about the textbook? That's the only required text for this class. There are some optional texts, a photographic atlas uh, for a microbiology laboratory by LaBeouf and Pierce, this book gives you photographs of microorganisms as well as uh, lab techniques. It's an optional text. I think the bookstore has this for sale as an optional text. There's the microbiology coloring book and the book Get Ready for Microbiology. Uh, you can find these in the course reserve in the library. They have uh, three copies of the textbook one copy of the photographic atlas, and then uh, two copies of Get Ready for Microbiology. Unfortunately, the library does not have the coloring book because obviously you want to buy that and then draw out the microorganism. So they don't have that. The library will be a good source for you, there are other sources. Obviously, my Canvas website is a very good uh, source. It'll have all the lecture notes, the worksheets, the lab modules, the lab projects, objectives. It is your responsibility to visit the website and access all materials and then check it. Like if there's a change in the schedule, I'll probably email you that, as well as put an announcement in the Canvas website. Uh, for the course description, I'm going to let you guys read that. The study, student course outcomes, I'll let you read that. Course policies and suggestions, let me talk a little bit about that. If you're sick, contact me and I'll help you keep on track in this online class. You do need to contact me prior to any due dates to make arrangements for late work, okay? Uh, if you're sick, don't go into 
college, but we're an online class. So um, hopefully if you're sick, you can still attend the class, at least if it's a cold. If you're really, really sick, I don't expect you to attend the uh, online class or the Zoom session. You can view it later. You should get prepared for the class. So you can read that. Class can be very busy, so you do need to keep up with the class. Attendance and participation, except for turning in that uh, first lab worksheet, I'm not gonna really be taking attendance. Okay. And as long as you get the first week's, uh, the first uh, lab done, you will not be dropped from the class. If you do not get the first lab done on time, you will be dropped from the class. Uh, for the lab materials, you can view it online later, but do realize you do need to submit the lab assignment by the due date, or it will be marked late and graded late. For the online quizzes, all the quizzes will be done online. You have 24 hours to take a quiz. If it is missed, it may not be able to be made up. If you ask to make it up more than three days after the quiz, you cannot make that quiz up because the answers will be showing for the quiz. So quizzes may not be taken after the answers become publicly available. Uh, the policy is something that was set up by the Clark College uh, Biology Department to reduce cheating. Let me go ahead and show you the schedule again. So the first real quiz will be quiz one. It can be started 8 p.m. Tuesday night and must be finished by 8 p.m. Wednesday night. So I say the quiz must be finished by 8 a.m. Wednesday night. So it must be done, taken during that 24 hour period. The multiple choice questions are time. So once you start the quiz, you have to finish within a certain amount of time. I generally give you one minute for each question and then something like three extra minutes for the quiz. So it's something like that. And if there's a lot of questions, you might be given a few extra minutes, like maybe five extra minutes. Okay. Uh, the reason why it's timed is you can obviously look up answers in your textbook. Nobody's going to be stopping you. But it's timed so that if you look up more than one or two answers, you're going to run out of time to take the quiz. So it won't gain you anything. You need to know the material before you take the quizzes because you will not have time to look up more than one or two answers. Any question about any of that? I was an instructor who uh, experimented and I did it one time where uh, we made it so that the quiz you could not finish. And the idea was everybody had the same amount of time. Nobody finished the quiz. And the quiz was graded on, uh, you know, um, what the highest uh, student got. And uh, that point was to reduce all cheating. And I played with it and I said, decided not to go that way because there's just too much stress for students. Well, there is actually an instructor, Clark, who does did the, did it that way. I'm not sure he's still doing it that way because I think it's quizzes now or in class, in which case it's probably not timed. Any question about the quizzes? All right. Read about the wearing a mask if you show up at Clark. Uh, you should read about the student responsibilities. I'll just mention that all interactions, including student to student, student to instructor, and instructor to student, should be cordial, businesslike, and professional. 
And that includes all communications like here, as well as an email. <clears throat> uh, let me to go over the instructor responsibilities. I'll try to respond to all Canvas emails within 48 hours. Clark emails, I'll try to respond to uh, within half a week. I'll try to have all assignments graded within a week of the due date. However, note that big assignments will take additional time. Our labs are also graded two times. So the first time it's graded, I'll tell you what you got wrong, and then you'll have about a week to submit the lab a second time with corrections. I will do the first grading within a week of when it is due. In fact, I'll try and get it graded within a few days of when it's due so that you have ample time to get it in by uh, a week later because it's it's the first due date is how do I say that? The first due date will be Saturday of the week of the lab. And then the next due date is almost always the second Saturday after the lab. Any question about that? Uh, this promise for the second grading, I'm not going to keep, meaning I'll do the second grading when I have time. Sometimes I'll get it graded shortly after the second Saturday. Other times it will not be graded for many Saturdays after the, the second Saturday of the lab. And that's just because I've already graded it one time and the second grading, I'm just not gonna promise that I'm gonna get it graded. The reason is I wanna give priority to the first grading. And so I'll always grade that the, the next lab first. And then if I have time, I'll go back and do the second grading. Generally speaking, I run out of time and that's why the second grading uh, of the lab will be delayed. Often it'll be delayed. Not always, but often it'll be delayed. And then the big assignments will take additional time. There's two very big assignments. Uh, one is the infectious disease project. It will take me hours, days, probably a week to get that assignment graded, okay? So I won't get that graded a week after the due date. And then the second big assignment is the lab report. That also will take me close to a week, although generally I get that graded before the uh, final or right after the final because it has to be graded before the uh, before the I turn in the grades and uh, it, the due date for that is at the end of the term. So it's sort of I'm sort of under a pressure to get that one graded. Any questions about any of that? All right. Uh, you can read about course withdrawal. If you do withdraw, try to withdraw. It's either Friday or Saturday of this week, and then you will get 100% refund for enrolling in this class. If you withdraw after that, and I don't remember if it's Friday or Saturday, I could look it up, but I'm not going to, um, you then have to pay for the class. So try and make your decision. It's probably Friday at 5 p.m. because that's when I have to put in my uh, my uh, uh, instructor withdrawals. A late assignment, uh, you may turn in late work. However, if you do, you have to email it to me at the Canvas website because the assignment will be shut down and you cannot turn it in. Okay. Now, let me state a little bit about the labs again. I guess I didn't mention that. And that is Canvas is not set up to allow two gradings of an assignment. So the first due date will be the first due date of the first grading. There was then an until date, and that will be the second due date. And so when you turn in the second 
grading of the lab, you may get a message saying that this assignment was turned in late. For the second lab, as long as you can turn it in, you can ignore that it's late because it's not. It's just Canvas doesn't allow me to have two due dates. Okay. However, if you can't turn it in, that means the assignment is late and you have to email it to me. If an assignment is late by one day, you're going to get a 25% reduction in your possible points for that assignment for one day. After one day, meaning two days or more, you're going to get a 50% reduction until I no longer uh, accept the assignment. And generally in this online class, I will accept a late assignment all the way until finals week. During finals week, I no longer accept late assignments. Student conduct, you should read about that. There's actually a student page, uh, not a student, a Clark College page about that. Uh, the only thing I need to mention is plagiarism. That's the use of another's work without citing credit. You will lose points and you could score a zero on the assignment if I discover that you have been plagiarizing. So I encourage you guys to work together, but instead of putting in your study buddy's words, word it in your own words, the answer, okay? Because if you do use your study buddy's words, and I notice the same two people have the same exact answer, that is plagiarism, and you'll both be marked down, okay? So what you should do if you want to use your steady buddy's words, because you think it's just perfect, put it in quotes and say where you got it from. Then it is not plagiarism. Okay? And this is generally the only problem I have with student conduct with students, and that is students plagiarize. Plagiarism is a real important thing, and the plagiarism tutorial will, will uh, go over that and teach you about plagiarism, but it is really important in school. It is also really important in life. How important is it? Well, if you don't know, President Biden, the very first time he was running to be a president, he had to drop out of the race because he plagiarized somebody else in a speech. I think it was somebody, a British politician. You can look that up if you want, okay? And but I actually has not been a, uh, too great about uh, plagiarism. He did something else, but I won't talk about. Another uh, reason for not plagiarism and how important plagiarism is, there is a, was a sitting senator. I think he was a sitting senator in Nebraska, but I don't remember the specifics of this case anymore. He had to resign for his Senate seat because when he was in graduate school, he plagiarized in his thesis or a PhD dissertation, meaning they write up a report for their, their graduate school, and he plagiarized. And somebody found out about it and published it, and he had to resign his Senate seat. Okay? So plagiarism is really important. And in school, we do not allow it. So do not plagiarize. If you want to use someone else's words, you have to put it in quotes and state where you got it from. And by the way, if you turn in an assignment and 50% of that assignment is quotes and plagi uh, stating who you got it from, I'm not going to accept that. You have to write uh, at least more than 50% of the report in your own words. Okay, and I made that policy after a student, most of her report was in quotes and I just said that's way too much, okay? Generally speaking, we like to have you write everything in your own words, but if you don't, put it in quotes and state where you got it from. There is one exception and that is when I ask for a definition, 
you can look up the definition in the textbook and use those words. You don't have to put it in quotes and say you got it from the textbook. Okay. Very rarely do I discover cheating, but cheating is not allowed either. And if I discover a student's cheating on a quiz or an assignment, you will be uh, probably get a zero for that assignment or quiz. You may be referred to the Dean of Student Affairs for further disciplinary action. Uh, you can read about reasonable accommodation for religion and conscience. You read about etiquette for Zoom. Generally, when you're talking, you have to unmute yourself to talk. And then when you're done talking, mute yourself. Okay. I'll let you read about this. Suggested study methods. Uh, like most classes, microbiology is challenging because there's so much new vocabulary. You're going to learn many new concepts. There's several assignments due at the same time. You may feel stressed, especially in the middle of the term. And if you fall behind, you'll be especially stressed trying to catch up. However, many students report that microbiology is one of their most enjoyable classes. To alleviate some of the stress in this class, uh, please understand the commitment at the start for what you're doing. You must set aside sufficient time for this class. This class is normally going to meet about three hours in lecture and about four hours for lab each week. So that's about seven hours per week in class time. Even if you don't meet in Zoom, you have to see the recording and do the lab. So it's still going to be about seven hours per week. You're also going to need to study and work on assignments, and that will come to about 14 hours outside of class each week for the average student. And if you cannot spend this amount of time on this class, Perhaps you should consider taking this class when you have more time. Now, this is for the average student. There are some students who can take less time and still get an A. However, if you're not spending the time that you need, your grade will suffer. So comprehension is a part of this class. And uh, your essay questions often will have comprehension-based questions. Uh, the, the multiple choice questions typically are not comprehension questions because I realize a comprehension question, you're going to have to spend some time thinking about it. Uh, you can improve your study technique by finding out what kind of a learner you are. And you can go to this lab's website at VARC to learn about that. Here's a list of suggestions that may help you study effectively. Use what works for you. Take on manageable chunks of time. Use concept mapping. There's a link to how to do that. Be organized. Use 10 to 15 minutes before class to scan both the previous class notes and those of the upcoming class. This will help you uh, figure out where we left off as well as get you in the proper mindset for the next class. Come to class. I know that sounds simple, but many instructors, including yours, yours have noted a strong correlation between attendance and grades. Obviously, the quizzes will be on material covered in the lecture. Listen in class. Do take notes, but do listen. And then go over your notes within 24 hours to add to your notes. So take, take sketchy notes and then go over them within 24 hours. You need to do it within 24 hours so that you can fill in the details. After 24 hours, your short-term memory will go. And so going over the notes, you will not be able to add to them. 
this may, if you take notes, even decrease your the study time you'll need. Try active strategies like forming a study group online. And if you quiz each other, that will help you get ready for the quiz. Another thing is one of the best ways to learn is to teach. You will also be allowed one extra credit point per week for something like nine weeks, so nine extra credit points, if you form a extra credit study group starting in week group uh, week two. Um, you just need to submit that, uh, that you're doing that. And you, I'll talk more about that in the future, but you have to turn in the right material get, to get the extra credit point and turning in the right place, obviously. And you can use concept mapping. There's a link on how to do concept mapping. Uh, let me state that when you're studying, if you only go over the material one time, you're not going to remember it. If you simply listen to the material, you're only going to learn about 10% of the material. You will forget 90% of the material. If you take notes, you will only learn about 20% of the material, which isn't an awful lot, but it is twice what it is if you only listen. Okay, that's why I encourage you to take notes. And then it's also well known the students study best and learn the best from their own notes, which is one reason why I do not give my slide presentation at the start. I do want you to take your own notes. Any question about that? All right, here's a question for you. How often do you have to go over material to actually learn it? Anyone have an idea? Let's say you're learning to play the piano or you're learning some difficult piece of, I don't know, music or, or reciting this very long poem. How many times do you have to go over the material before you learn it? Anyone have any guess? Um, me personally, so I try to go through any notes or any material at least four or five times okay that's actually low but it is uh uh possible to learn it if you go over it four or five times especially if you want to learn it if you really want to learn it you don't have to go over it the average time they've done this study mostly in middle school students for some reason but they found with humans like the first time they're learning a piano piece they have to go over it about 20 times before they learn it. And this is true for middle school students. Whenever they're gonna learn the material, they have to go over it about 20 times. And if they go over it 20 times, they now have learned the material. So if you listen to it, that's once. You take notes, that's twice. You review your notes once, that's only three times. You may need to go over it many more times. Now, like I said, you're an adult, and if you really want to learn this material, you can short it so you will learn it fewer than going over it 20 times. But if you don't really want to learn it, you're going to have to go over it 20 times before you learn the material. All right, so this tells you the grading in the class. The plagiarism quiz is worth 20 points. The quizzes are 75 points each. There's going to be five of them but the lowest quiz will be dropped. So only four of them will count for a total of 300 points. The worksheets for the lab will be uh, 50 points. It's about one worksheet per lab, one lecture per lab on average for 25 points. I think there's one or two lectures where there's actually two worksheets for that. Uh, Actually, it's probably only chapter eight where there's two worksheets, but there might be another one. Uh, the identification of the unknown bacteria, the lab project, lab report, 75 points. The infectious disease research project, 100 points. The cumulative final exam, 150 points. 
That's a total of 720 points. Any question about any of that? All right. Uh, that doesn't include the extra credit points. There will be about 20 extra credit points. The grading, if you get 92% or higher, you'll get an A. 90% or higher, you'll get an A minus. 88% or higher or B plus. 82% or higher or B. 80% uh, or higher, a B minus. A C plus is 78% or higher. A C, 70% or higher. A D, seven, a 90, a 60%, and notice there is no D plus or D minus, no C minus in this class, a less than 60% in F. You do note the canvas has a grading scale, but its scale is a little different than this, so that the grade it's showing you may be slightly off. Any questions about any of that? You can read about question review and written corrections. Uh, I'll talk more about the microscope use and the virtual labs in the lab. There's a bunch of support services for students. You can read about the non-discrimination policy, the emergency closing policy, which generally, even if we get a blizzard, which won't likely happen in the spring, but uh, it could happen. Uh, generally, we won't be closed because we're meeting online. Uh, this information is not terribly important for you, although the COVID-19 mitigation efforts may be come into play if you do go on campus. And um, information about the lab. We'll talk a little bit about that in the lab. Some advice, words of advice and comfort. I'm going to let you read that because I'm kind of going over talking about the syllabus. And the lab safety rules, we'll go over that in the lab later today. A lot of rules for the lab, aren't there? And then the tentative course schedule. Any question? If not, let's begin chapter one. All right, I usually give you an introductory slide showing you here that this is uh, chapter one, the microbial world in you. And we'll do a little bit of the classification of microorganisms in this lesson as well. In the first slide, I usually give you the major goals and a rough outline. So know the terms. This is the major goals. If you wanna know all the goals, take a look at the objectives. And then we'll talk about a brief history of microbiology and the importance of microbes. When we're talking about the importance of microbes, let's begin with talking about the importance of microbes in the nitrogen cycle. Here we're seeing the nitrogen cycle. Let me blow that up. Where we're seeing nitrogen moving around on the earth, we're going to just start with it in the atmosphere. It can be fixed by bacteria and archaea into an organic chemical compound, which mostly will be decomposed when the uh, bacteria and archaea die into ammonia and ammonium. But a little bit can be taken directly up by plants, and some can decompose into nitrate. So we're going to follow it this way because that's where most of it, the nitrogen goes. Uh, ammonia can be changed into ammonium just by uh, mixing with water. And plants and algae can use ammonia or ammonium, but they don't like it. And you get too much ammonia, it'll actually kill the plant. 
Uh, the ammonia, most of it will be converted into nitrite by bacteria and archaea. And uh, the nitrite can be converted into nitrate by bacteria. And this is the form of nitrogen that green plants love. If you check a plant fertilizer, a lot of it will be nitrates. And then this is the form that animals will eat, or that form. And then when they die, most of it will go be decomposed by actually a microbe or a fungi, like mushrooms, into ammonium. And I mentioned that here, the same there. Um, so the green plants will convert it into our compound and go that way, I guess. But, but uh, the point is, the nitrate can be converted by bacteria and archaea back into the nitrogen in the atmosphere. And now we've gone through the entire cycle of the nitrogen cycle. How important are microorganisms in the nitrogen cycle? Wherever we have a red arrow, this step in the nitrogen cycle is happening because of a microorganism. Okay? So you'll notice most of the steps in the nitrogen cycle are happening because of microbes. Only this one and maybe that one and that one are not happening because of a microorganism. Most of the other steps are happening because of a microorganism. So microorganisms are responsible for nitrogen moving around and recycling in the ecosystem. Otherwise, Nitrogen would just accumulate in one place, like if the dead plant were to die and wouldn't be decomposed, all the nitrogen would be locked up in that dead plant. It would never recycle, and then the nitrogen available on the earth would eventually all become locked up. So the recycling of nitrogen is extremely important on the planet, and it's happening because of microorganisms. And this step here is also happening because of fungi, but microorganisms also decompose. Uh, if you don't know, mushrooms break down dead things. Mold does too. Of course, mold is a microorganism. It's a fungi too. Uh, microorganisms are also important in the formation of soil. Microbes can obtain nutrients from rocks and actually break down the rocks, leading to the formation of soils. Now, please understand that the majority of soil is not made by microorganisms. Most soil is made by erosion, either from the wind or water, but a significant amount of the soil is made by microorganisms, breaking down the rocks. Any question about that? So microorganisms are important in the nitrogen cycle and the soil formation. Microorganisms are also important in the production of oxygen in the earth. When we look at the earth oxygen levels over time, you'll note that present day oxygen at around 21% wasn't always that way. In fact, only as recently has been 21%. Below that, it decreased decreased and then eventually decreased further until there was no oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. So that happened for the first, I don't know, 2.7 billion years, 1.8 billion years of the planet Earth. There was no oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere for around the first 2 billion years. There, right there. What first generated oxygen right here, microorganisms. The cyanobacteria and other bacteria began aerobic respiration and they made oxygen, which was a waste product and it was released by the plant and went into the atmosphere right there. That allowed for the development and evolution of plants, which then gave rise to the this increased uh, rate of oxygen, which gave the present 
amount of oxygen in the earth. And even if we look at this 21% oxygen, only about half of that oxygen comes from green plants and, and algae. The other half comes from microorganisms. The point is microorganisms are extremely important for the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere, okay? And without them, we would have never got this first oxygen, which would have, which allowed the evolution of green plants. Because you can't have green plants evolving on the Earth without some oxygen blocking the UV light. So you needed some ozone initially to block UV light before we could ever have green plants evolving on the surface of the Earth. And here's a sewage treatment plan. Humans are responsible for generating the waste when they flush their toilets and wash stuff down their drain, right? And humans break it down. That's why we made this, this uh, sewage treatment plant, right? Anyone object? You should, because humans don't break down any of that waste. We simply build the facility and then the microorganisms break down the waste in this facility. So microorganisms are responsible for breaking down the waste. And in a sense, I actually talked about that. This is largely decomposing material, which we already talked about in the nitrogen cycle. All decomposition happens by either bacteria, archaea, or fungi which most of the fungi and all the archaea, bacteria, and the bacteria are microorganisms. The only fungi which are not are the mushrooms, and they do decompose. And we don't have many mushrooms growing in these waste treatment plants, so it's almost all microorganisms breaking down the waste. The point is microorganisms are extremely important to the planet, Without them, we would not have the recycling of nutrients, the recycling of uh, nitrogen, the recycling of other things. Let's briefly talk about what microbes are. Uh, generally, we use the term microorganism synonymously with microbe, although microorganism does imply that it is an organism. An organism means it has a cell. And so I will use this term to mean a microbe that is cellular. And whenever I'm talking about a microbe that's not cellular, like a virus, I'll use the term microbe, okay? Uh, although microorganism can be used with a, a, a virus. Uh, microorganisms or microbes are, or, or living life forms or some virus that is too small to be seen with the unaided eye they're single cell, they have many shapes. They include the bacteria, the archaea, the yeast, the molds, uh, the protozoans. Some of the algae, if they're single cell, they're very small. And then the viruses and the prions are also considered microbes. You should realize that viruses and prions are special microbes because they do not have cells. You could even argue that they're not alive. We're not going to get into that argument. But uh, they are special because they are not organisms. They are not cells. Micro microbes are almost everywhere. So we say they are. there is a ubiquity of microorganisms on the planet Earth. They play beneficial roles in numerous processes. And they are numerically the most abundant life form on the planet. Any question about any of that? All right, if there's no questions, I'm going to end it here, and I'll see you at 6.30 for the lab. Bye.